In the last video, I was showing you some tricks for how to do factoring, or at least I explained the steps in this algorithm. So the first step was if you wanted to get from general form to factored form, in other words, from ax squared plus bx plus c form into something more useful for finding roots, then we follow these steps or this recipe. Now I'm going to show you in context and what to do here. So if we want to factor something, first we're going to take out common factors of the entire equation. So let's take a look at this example and see if we can do that. So are there any common factors to this? Well, I don't have to worry about it. I mean, there's a 1x squared plus 1x minus 2. There's no common numbers except for a 1. So in other words, this first step is done. There was nothing to do. The next step is to look at and write out what a, b, and c are. Well, that we can do. So we know that a is, let's see, it's like a little stealth 1 in front of the x squared. So a is 1. We have b equals 1 and c equals minus 2. Remember, the a, b, and c values should not have x's in them. We're just talking about the numbers in front of x squared and the number in front of x and then the number that's by itself. Okay, so now we've got a is 1, b is 1, c is minus 2. Now we want to find the magic numbers. In other words, a pair of numbers whose product is a, c, and whose sum is b. So let's look at that. That means I want the product to be a, c. In other words, I need to find two numbers. When I multiply them together, that's what product means. When I multiply them together, the result is a times c. So 1 times negative 2, which is negative 2. I also need for the sum to be just b, which in this case is just 1. So I need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 2, and those same two numbers have to add up to 1. If I can't find those numbers, then this does not factor. And so using this factoring trick will fail you, right? It just, it won't work. So let's take a look at what numbers multiply to negative 2. Well, I can do 1 times negative 2. Those two multiply to this. But keep in mind, there's also negative 1 and 2. In other words, the trick is if you find a pair of numbers that work, you can also do the opposite. So in this case, negative 1 and 2. Those also multiply to negative 2. But do these ones add up to 1? So what does 1 minus 2 equal? 1 minus 2 is negative 1. That doesn't work. But negative 1 plus 2, those add up to 1. That's why these are going to be my magic numbers, so to speak. Okay, so I found my magic numbers. It's negative 1 and 2. So that is this step here. We found our magic numbers in this case. Now I'm supposed to divide them both by a. Um, what I should have written, I'm very sorry, in the last video I should have added this. I should have reduced the fraction. So if you're looking at the last video, make sure you add that. So I should divide by a and reduce these fractions. Maybe I'll write that down here. So let's take a look then what that means. I'm going to take these two numbers, negative 1 and 2. I'm going to divide them both by a. Maybe I should, uh, you know what, I'm going to do these in, I'm going to try to make this a little bit better and color coded here. So I'm going to write down these two numbers. And I'm going to write down in blue, divide by a. That's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to divide both of these by a, which in this case is 1. Then I'm going to reduce these fractions in case they do. In this case, I can't do anything else with this fraction or this fraction. They don't reduce. But if they did, I would have reduced them here. And then the last step is read. Whoops, I can't spell. So I should say read bottom to top. So let's see what that actually means. What this means I should do is I should take this number uh, here. Maybe I'll just rewrite them. So I'll rewrite them again. So I have negative 1 over 1 comma 2 over 1. That's what I have now. This is my fraction that I have. So what I'm supposed to do here is read them bottom to top. Oh, that's a little bit of a strange thing. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. When I say read bottom to top, what I mean is that the answer is going to need to be something like this. It's going to be in this form. 
right? There's going to be some x's going on. It's going to be like something times something. So if I want to read this from bottom to top, what I do is I take this bottom number here, and that's going to be times x. So it's going to be 1 times x, which is just x. That's why I say read bottom to top. This is 1 times x, and then I just add or subtract the top value. So in other words, 1 times x minus 1. And this one right here, this is bottom to top again. So 1 times x, this is a positive 2. So 1 times x is just x, and then I add 2. So it turns out this is my factored form. This always works. That's what's really cool about this. So that means now I have zero equals, because if I'm trying to, oops, actually, I'm not trying to do anything here. I was just trying to factorize the following. So if the question was just to factorize the following, then I can say then that y equals, I'll say therefore, y equals x minus 1 times x plus 2. It turns out that is the same thing as this equation. Okay, so x squared plus x minus 2 is the same thing as x minus 1 times x plus 2. The advantage, though, of writing it in this factored form is that this makes it much easier to find the roots. In this case, the roots would be x equals 1 and x equals minus 2. Those are the values that would work here. So that's the goal of factorizing. Let's do a different one, maybe one that looks tougher. Find the zeros or roots of this one. So the first step then is to take a look at this and see, can I take out common factors of the entire equation? Nope, I don't have anything that's common to these. So the next step then is to write down what a, b, and c are. So in this case, I've got a equals 2, I've got b equals 7, and I've got c equals 6. Right? Those are the numbers in front. Now remember, the next step after that is to say the product. I have to find numbers whose product is AC and whose sum is B. So in this case, I'm going to look at this then and say, well, the product must be A times C, which means 2 times 6, which equals 12. And the sum should be B, which is just 7. So I need two numbers who multiply to 12, who add up to 7. So let me take a look and see if I can think of numbers now. Well, 1 times 12 multiplies to 12. So does negative 1 times negative 12. I'm just trying to be really um, careful here to make sure I get everything right. I've also got 2 and negative 6 will work. Whoops, sorry. Not negative 6, positive 6. So 2 and 6 will work, but so will negative 2 and negative 6. I've also got 3 and 4, those also multiply to 12, so does negative 3 times negative 4. I think I've got all of the uh, numbers that multiply to 12. In other words, I've got all the factors of 12 written out. Now, do any of these add up to 7? That's the key thing here. I want them to add to 7. These don't. Nope, nope, nope. But these do. So now I've got my magic numbers. 3 and 4. Now what am I supposed to do with those magic numbers? I'm supposed to divide by a and reduce the fractions. So I'm going to divide both of these by a. So in other words, divide it by 2 and divide it by 2. Because right? that's what a is. a is 2. And then I can reduce my fractions. Well, that becomes just 3 over 2. That doesn't reduce. But 4 over 2 becomes something more exciting. That becomes, well, 2 over 1. And then the last step is to read bottom to top. Maybe I'll do this now in black, because this is the end here. So that means I get y equals, I'm going to read these bottom to top. So 2 times x, just 2x, and then plus 3. And I read this one bottom to top. So 1 times x plus 2. Turns out this is fully factored. Isn't that awesome? This totally works. That means I can do this for anything. A, A can be anything you want. As long as this thing factors, which in this case it does, because I could find two numbers whose product was 12 and whose sum was 7. As long as I can find those magic numbers, then this thing factors. And if you look, it's really quick. You just divide by A, then you reduce the fraction, read it bottom to top, and you're done factoring. Now keep in mind, though, the goal wasn't just to factorize this. The question said to find the zeros or the roots or the x-intercepts. So how do I do that? I just set y equal to 0. So then I get 2x plus 3 
times x plus 2. And then I just try to think of what values of x make this work. And as we were doing before, then I just need to make this thing equal to 0. Right? So I can say 2x plus 3 equals 0. And that means then I get 2x equals negative 3, because I move that over. It means I get x equals negative 3 over 2. That's one of my answers. And again, if you notice the trick, all you can do is when you see something in ax plus b form like this, it's always going to be minus this over this, so minus 3 over 2. Now in this form over here, though, see here I was dealing with that one. x plus 2, that's easy. x is just negative 2. Whoops. That will make this one work. So these are the roots, or the zeros, of this. Which means if I was trying to do the graph of this thing, I would know then where this thing right here crosses the x-axis. Right? It happens at minus 2, so somewhere over here, and minus 3 over 2, which is minus 1.5, so somewhere over here as well. So it actually cross here and here. That looks a little bit weird, so I'm not sure what it does, but maybe something like that. I'm not sure exactly how steep this thing goes. I would have to do some more work. But the goal is just to show you how easy it is to find the zeros or roots of equations if you can get it in factored form, which we just did. We just factored it to get it in factored form. See this, this is in factored form. Okay, so that's why we do this. We can take anything that factors, get it in factored form, and then from there, finding the roots is actually not very complicated. There's not many steps to do.